film report from the Southwest Pacific, where American planes, powered by high octane, serviced by billions of small parts from the factories of America, are delivering packages of death to the Japs, bombing the daylight out of the rising sun. Drake at Hansa Bay, New Guinea. A force of 100 Liberators, Fortresses, and Medium Mitchells drops 180 tons of explosives. Hits on bivouac areas, supply, fuel, and ammunition dumps. Other results, one freighter, 45 barges destroyed. All American planes return. Raid on Weewak, New Guinea. A surprise attack at Jap Pearl Harbor. 120 Jap planes destroyed. 50 Jap planes damaged. 1,500 Jap airmen and ground crew killed. Three American planes lost. This is where the Japs learned about skip bombing. on Rabaul, New Britain. Three raids in early October produced these results. Destroyed or sunk, three merchant vessels, two destroyers. One hundred jet planes destroyed on the ground. Fifty jet planes damaged on the ground. Twenty-six out of forty jet fighter planes destroyed in the air. Five U.S. planes missing, others damaged. Here, the Japs learned about parafrags, fragmentation bombs dropped by parachutes lest they explode too soon beneath the low-flying plane. fighter planes with 100 octane gunning them across the sky on business of their own. GSAP stands for gun sight aiming point, camera synchronized with the bullets. For the next few minutes, you'll get a gun sight view of the target. Hang on. Vinchhofen, Lieutenant Richard L. West in combat with a Jap fighter. Joseph T. McKeon destroys a Jap Coney fighter. <laughs> Juan Gulf, Lieutenant Noel R. Lundy destroys a Jap Zeke fighter. Captain Walter G. Benz, Jr. destroys a diner reconnaissance plane. Lay, Major Thomas L. Lynch destroys a Jap dive bomber. 
WEWAC, Major Lynch destroys a Jap Dyna reconnaissance plane. Solomon, way out in the middle of the world. Munda of the airfield built by the Japanese, bombed and taken by the Americans, and rebuilt by the Americans. Munda, rebuilt by this American, and hundreds more like it. Rebuilt by... Boat, hip, boil, yeah. brown, you, Hadman, oh. name isn't really Drake, but it might be. Joe Drake, Drake of Munda. Home, Portland, Oregon. Education, high school. Family, mother, father, three brothers, two sisters, wife, two-year-old son. Trade, worker. Drake of Munda isn't a rich man when it comes to money, but he's not a poor man when it comes to the things that really matter. The other men of Munda are not much different from Joe Drake. The roll of honor goes on and on. At home or out yonder when the roll is called, the men of America answer and go to their work. Build up and break down. That's the story of war. Break down and break down until the enemy is driven away or destroyed. Then build and build quickly. Build to advance the day the war will end, the day the peace will begin. Fill in the holes, level the earth, pack it down smooth and hard. It's the new world that's being made. These men are not just repairing an airfield. They're repairing human life. They're restoring human rights. They are serious men. They are men of faith. They are proud men, they're angry men. They are the men of America. Nothing can stop them, nothing has ever stopped them, nothing ever will. The job is done in record-breaking time. The precious field is ready. Our planes can now take off by the hundreds, moving time a little closer to the great day of peace restored, family reunited, peaceful enterprise resumed. Home now, each man to his own remembered world. Stanford, letter from Memphis, Tennessee. Thompson, letter from Shawnee, Ohio. Underfield, letter from Brandywine, Maryland. Van Horn, letter from Hemlock, New York. These men are not going in to supper at a high-toned nightclub. This is supper way out in the middle of the world. This food is fuel for the great motor of freedom, the mighty machine of victory. out in the middle of the world. Godspeed, men of Munda.
There, far below this plain, down on that Italian beach, is the landing fleet of the American 5th Army. The 5th Army took this place by storm, with warships and men blasted by an alert and savage enemy. They took this place under the command of General Mark Clark, who stood on the beach at Salerno and said, we are here to stay. Not one foot of ground will be given up. This is the sightseeingest war there ever was. The soldiers of the 5th Army kept their eyes peeled as they moved along the dusty roads. They moved in jeeps and tanks, on foot, in ducks, half tracks, tank destroyers. They saw Englishmen fighting beside them. English equipment on the roads alongside their own. This welcome might have taken place in any city an American army enters these days. This could have been Algiers or Bizerte or Salerno or Hartford. This could not have been Hartford. Once on the roads of this ancient country, the chariots of Caesar and the elephants of Hannibal. Now, American tanks, trucks, guns, gasoline, ammunition, spare parts, medical supplies. Materiel of every description moving up to supply the advancing 5th Army. The soldiers poured into Naples to witness other scenes. A city once famed for its beauty, now smashed and sacked by the Germans. People begging for clothes, water, bread. The objective was to take Rome, not in a week or a month, not on any given date, but take Rome with the smallest loss of life. The philosophy of this Italian campaign was revealed by its tactics. Expend American materiel instead of American men to beat back the Nazis. Use and use again, wherever possible, the products of the sweat of American workers instead of the blood of American doughboys. The rounds of artillery were measured by the millions, more than the Germans ever dreamed could be used, where there was a chance that an extra artillery shell might kill a German or save an American, that round was fired. The Fifth Army moving up. Wreckers pulled down the tottering walls. Yankee-built bulldozers cleared the streets and roads so that the mass of supplies could come through. Mine detectors cleared the field so that the tools could get to the front, so that weary men could make their way to the two great luxuries of the foot soldier, hot water and soap, a few moments of rest. These are the soldiers of the 5th Army. These are the men for whom their fellow workers at home are toiling. And where there was a chance that an extra artillery shell might save an American, that round was fired. The 5th Army moving up into Avellino to behold more sight. A deserted city, a lone child, a woman carrying on her head a casket 
for a member of her family. The Americans also had their burdens to carry. These were honored in their generation and were the glory of the time. This is the city of Benevento, a nightmare city. Bombed, shelled, gutted, pillaged, a dead city, a city murdered by war. This could have been one of many Italian cities an American army enters these days, Alife or Dragoni or Benevento. This, the sightseeing Fifth Army saw, and thank God it could not have been San Diego or Boston or Hartford. The Volturno River. Across this river, the road to Rome. Here, the retreating Germans dug in. Every bridge was blown. The Fifth Army moved up. Ponton bridges were built and the reinforcements swung through. Tanks, trucks, guns, gasoline, ammunition, spare parts, medical supplies, materiel of every description. Tons upon tons of these instead of lives upon lives of American fighting men. The Americans fought the enemy and the elements. They had battered their way to the Volturno. Now they were to witness anxious moments, desperate sights. Trucks mired in the mud. Ponton bridges breaking up, swept away by the force of the river. But the indomitable engineers, slashed by wind and storm, in the face of enemy fire, built new ones. The Fifth Army moving up across the Volturno, across every barrier on the road to victory. Our friends at home must not suppose from these victories that the road to Rome or the road to Berlin will be easily or quickly passed. We face a desperate enemy who fights like a cornered rat. Mountainous terrain lies ahead of us. We will beat him, but not without bitter struggles and heavy sacrifices.